I'm still sick as a dog. Let's do this. When you add more stuff, do you really get more for your money? Starting off with the conclusion, the five camera phone. What happens when we take one of the best platforms for mobile content creation and staple on a couple extra cameras? About what you would expect. The V40 at once manages to address the shortcomings of its predecessor, while still not quite delivering the fun feature polish we should hope for on a premium priced flagship. Let's not bury the lead too much though. Improvements to the core photography experience are significant even for auto mode shooters. The larger sensor paired with a wider aperture address nearly every concern we've had with LG's past. However, straying from that core improvement, playing with the new zoom sensor, for example, fun features are less refined than the competition. That continues to make LG a harder recommendation for folks looking at casual all-rounder performance while simultaneously making the V40 an even stronger offering for people who really want better tools to produce from their phones. LG often ends eras of technology, the last at a party to leave. None of us realized we were holding the last flagship with a removable battery while we were reviewing the V20. Now, the V40 might represent something less dramatic, but similar for photography. There's a straightforward, old-fashioned approach to processing JPEGs. The industry is racing towards heavier-handed software processing and HDR-style image stacking. LG is currently more focused on better hardware controls. That means it's easy, really easy, to miss what's so special about recent LG phones. Familiarizing yourself with LG's camera app, carving just past a small collection of quirks, plenty of quirks on LG phones, you're significantly rewarded for digging a little deeper. The fresh out of the box, push only the shutter experience on a Pixel or an iPhone is easily more satisfying. But neither of those phones have as much to offer past that initial satisfaction. LG maintains a position alongside Samsung and Huawei, rewarding the user for taking a little extra time, exerting a very little extra effort to get better images and videos out of their phones. Now, if only I could reliably use this zoom sensor for macro shots. You wanna see how I arrived at this conclusion? Of course you do. Why else would you be here? Buckle up, folks, we've got a lot of ground to cover. I'm reviewing five cameras here, so I'm gonna try and move pretty quick. Oh, a camera is more than just its collection of megapixels, and there are a ton of megapixels on this phone. A lot of people have highlighted the number of cameras or the addition of a novelty feature like the zoom, but the critical improvement this year for LG is climbing back up the sensor size food chain. Matching Samsung, Google, and Apple, the main shooter sensor size increases and reducing the pixel count over the V30. Last year's V pulled off some incredible shots for its smaller sensor, so I had very high expectations of what this new hardware could achieve. Additionally, the wide angle shooter gets a little less wide. We get that dedicated zoom, and on the front, we see the happy return of separate normal and wide selfie shooters. The V40 covers a lot of ground, and this video also took extra time to produce as LG has delivered two significant updates improving camera performance and I had to reshoot several times. It was worth reshooting just to see the differences in JPEG processing over how this phone was reviewed at launch. You know, doing my due diligence. Kicking things off with exposure and saturation, as mentioned earlier, the V40 maintains a slightly older fashioned approach to capturing a shot. None of the fancy image stacking or faux